Hello, everybody. Hello, Guppy Force, Gamada, Apparition, and PDI. Oh my god, ouch, 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 sorry. I don't know if you can see in the chat there, but um, yeah, I, hello, Marco J. I got kind of fucked up today. I, uh, I tripped uh, while running to the train station. I have no idea what I tripped on, but uh, yeah. My hand is fucked up and my leg is uh, out, hurting a bunch. So we'll see how I go. It's kind of hard to walk, but uh, we'll see how I go. Hello, Archie Rip. Hello, Lone King. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. I, I honestly have no idea why I'd be tripping. But uh, last time we got to know Pauline and Javi. And uh, it looks like they're going to... Get closer to Bestia's mansion, which is the Rose Manor. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen when they they confront each other. Oh, my God. And, and then um, Bestia Slay, another Bestia, and hello, April Umi. And, oh, hello, Nagels. And it looks like Bestia might be a human, but we're seeing him as some kind of monster. Who knows what the word bestia truly means in this kind of um, context. Either way, it looks like uh, we're getting to the end of door number two here. So yeah, I'll try to see as best as I am able. Ouch, ouch. <laughs> oh my god, very funny Archie Rhett. Let's get back into it. Oh, is that so? Very well, then. Oh, no. Thank you for the information. I really appreciate it. And don't worry about me. I'll keep safe. Goodbye. Just checking if the music is a bit loud. I think that's good. Shortly before I arrived at the village, a beast appeared. It killed a number of villagers and then disappeared. Ever since then, the village hasn't been itself. Hello, T. There's a cloud of gloom hovering over it. Fear visible in everyone's eyes. At first, I thought that fear was of the beast returning. But that's not quite right. The troubles with the beast are, in fact, still ongoing. Ah, oh, Javi. Hey. I hear you were asking around about the beast. Yeah. Talking about the beast is taboo. People are going to push you away even harder now. Though... Oh, that's still him. Though, though, I guess you are leaving in a few days. people going missing. Your beast problem is still going on, isn't it? Huh? After asking around, I'm beginning to piece things together. When the beast voice appeared, you chased it away. However, later, the beast came back, killing villages. After that, the beast disappeared, but villages began disappearing through. Once a week, someone would just be gone. And even as the weeks passed, none of them ever returned. The people of this village think the beast is responsible. They think it's kidnapping villages. That's right. This village is under the beast's curse. So you're better off forgetting about this place. And the savage beast that dwells nearby. You don't belong in a place like this. Oh my god, he really does care! Oh my god, that is so sweet of Javi! Oh my god! He really does care about her. Oh, 
Go back to your hometown where it's peaceful. That's the kind of life you deserve. Oh my god! Oh my god! That is so sweet of him! Wow! Javi! What? I want you to be honest with me about some. Where this... I won't tell you. Why not? They told me! That you... That you know where the beast is, Javi. I heard from the other villagers that you once chased the beast. Sure you didn't mishear him? No, I'm positive! You know where the beast ran off to? Where its hideaway is! You chased the after it, found its den, and then you came back. That's what I heard. Didn't you? Why did you keep that from me? When you told me about the beast? I asked you to tell me everything you knew, Javi! But you brushed me off, said you didn't know anything. Said that I should talk to someone else. But in reality, you know more about than anyone else! Tell me why. Why did you hide that from me? What were you thinking? As you watched me frantically asking around the village for more information. Were you, were you enjoying yourself? <sighs> Tell me. Why are you always so mean to me? Shut the hell up! <gasps> like I could tell you! Like I could actually tell you that! What the village tell you about me? Did it go something like this? That the kid couldn't even take revenge for his goddamn parents? Did that damn coward! I'm sure you heard that one plenty from everyone. And now you think that I'm a coward too. I don't. Yeah, it's true. I went after the beast. I chased it down the night to kill my parents. Hiding around back, I saw it slip into the forest. So I went after it, chasing it until I reached its den. I despised that bestie with everything I had. It murdered my mom and dad. It murdered my friends, the kindly priest, every decent person in town. I wanted... I needed to get revenge for what it had done. It was my duty to bring retribution upon the beast that stole everything from me! So I... I tried to confront the bestia. But... I couldn't do it. Not only could I not stand up to it, as soon as it turned around, I saw its eyes. Its bloodshot eyes and black irises. I couldn't move. Javi. Yeah, that's right. I was a coward. I watched as it killed my parents. And even followed it home. Oh, sorry. Knocked the computer a bit. But I couldn't do anything. Except anything except run, flee, screaming in terror. That was all I could do. Javi, that doesn't make you a coward. If the beast really was that terrifying. But I was supposed to stand up to it! That's what the rest of the village would have wanted. For someone to eradicate the bestia. When I came back, having accomplished nothing, everyone was so harsh. You coward, what'd you even go out there for? Constant ridicule. What right did they have to? Seriously? They're, they're blaming a little kid for not going and killing a giant monster that killed like 15 people. They are fucking assholes. What assholes? Seriously, he's a fucking boy. And, and, this, and they expect him to be able to avenge everybody and kill this monster that killed like dozens of people on his own. What jackasses. They really want him gone. They could all go together and... No one's got that kind of courage left. What hypocrites. 
What bloody hypocrites. They're all waiting for someone else to speak up. Someone to stand up and say, let's go kill that beast. But no one has the guts to take that initiative. It could have been me, but... The moment I felt fled back to the village in fear, I lost that qualification. You think that was just me being mean? Huh? They didn't tell you where the beast dwells? Do you think that was just me harassing you? I've seen the beast. I know how scary it is. And I know how dangerous it is. And you think I tell you where it is? I know good and well what you're thinking! That that guy you're looking for might have been taken by him. And you want to go to its den to see if he's there. I... Knowing that, do you really think I tell you? If you go, you'll... It'll kill you. You don't have any evidence anyway. Nothing that points to the guy being taken by the beast. But... You don't need to put your life on the line for something like that. Something so uncertain. Uh -huh. Even if... Even if by some chance he was taken by the beast, there's no way he'd be alive! That's what the beast does. No one comes back alive. But... You came back alive, Javi. <sighs> Which means... There's no saying for sure either way. That's just... Because I ran away immediately, but... Even if he did manage to escape, that's all the more reason not to check the beast's den! I... I want to know for sure whether he's alive or dead. Somewhere in a little, little corner of my heart, part of me just thinks that he might just actually be dead. I have to have faith, but I'm so close to cracking to thinking that he will ever come back to me. Then why don't you just give up on him already? Without knowing for sure, I can't let it go. I'll debate with myself forever, until I die an old lady, of a whether or not he's still alive. That's how my life will end. You want closure. You want to know for sure whether he's alive or dead, right? And even if he is dead, you'll be satisfied just knowing it? Right. Which is why I want to at least follow any possible leads. There might be it not be anything saying he's there. But it is true that the remains of the ship he was on washed up in this village. If he wanted the area and ended up at the beast den where he was killed. Then I'll let go. So please, Javi, tell me where the beast dwells. Make this the last time. Huh? Even if you find no trace of him at the beast den. Even if you don't figure out whether he's alive or dead. You'll give up your search for him. You'll assume he's dead. If you don't reach some conclusion, you'll just keep searching. Keep going to dangerous places. Keep putting yourself at risk. I want you to stop that. To stop. Go back to your town. And live a normal life. Settle on an answer. If you can promise me that... I'll tell you where the beast den is. Okay. I promise. This will be the last place I look. Two more things. 
first. I'm going with you. What? But I thought... Isn't that dangerous? Exactly. I can't let you go alone. Oh my god, he does like her! I knew it! I fucking knew it! I fucking knew it. <sighs> Javi. I have to go with you and make sure you don't do anything stupid. Yep, they have that kind of relationship. Oh, wow. Alright, fine. And the other one is? You will not enter the den. You don't understand just how dangerous the beast is. It knows no mercy. It indiscriminately attacks any human it sees. That's not true, Javi. He only attacks if they have a weapon or something. Oh my god. Well, that's what he did at first, and then he just started killing randomly, so... I guess that's true now. But then he stopped because of the white-haired girl. So you can't let the beast find you. You just examine the den from the outside. And when you're done, back to the village. Understood? You need to promise me this. Okay. Alright, one more thing. Huh? I thought it was just two things. This is less of a promise and more something that would be nice. Decided that when we make it back to the village, uh, I actually would like if you could take me to your hometown. Javi. I'll figure out some way to get permission. And I'll do my best not to be a burden on you. I'm still just a kid. And there's not a whole lot I can do, even in a better place. But I'm surprisingly skilled with my hands. If you have work for me, I'll do anything. So, there's that. Yes. Yes! Of course I will! We'll go back to my hometown together, and I'll show you all around. You can get some great ham sandwiches there. We'll eat them together in the park. You've... I'm bracing myself for a sad ending, though. Oh, God. I don't know how this is going to end. Oh, God. You've told me that already. <laughs> Are you ever not hungry, lady? Uh, you laughed! You just laughed, Javi! <laughs> Whoa, back off! I did not laugh! Nope, you definitely laughed. You know, you're kind of cute when you laugh, Javi. Come on, do it again. Woohoo! Yes! Go on, like this. Sh shut up! Stay back! It's not like I like you or anything, Baka. <laughs> Stop it! Don't touch my cheeks! Roar! But I just wanted to see it again. I am not your plaything. Anyway, we set out tomorrow. We will return before it gets dark. You will keep your promises. And you will not do anything dangerous. Got it. Promise. Thank you, Javi. I don't need your thanks. Thank you. <sighs> that thank you is not for him agreeing to... Oh, that's her. 
That thank you was not for him agreeing to tell me what the beast done is. But because I can see that Javi's trying to save me. His care comes the turbulent waves that have been crashing inside me. I was always anxious. I always believed. I always thought I'd see him again. But I also recognized that I was practically living a fantasy. I was just too stubborn to admit it. I certainly wouldn't be able to change how I feel immediately. I'll probably continue loving him. Nevertheless, Javi's words resonated confidently with me. I can see, if it vaguely, a new path, a new way of life appearing before me. That's what he did for me. I will make this the last time. My final attempt to find him. No matter the outcome, I will stop stubbornly believing he's alive. And then, I'll find happiness on a different path. Oh god. I'm so worried! Oh god! I am so worried! Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god! Oh god, I am so worried. Oh god, I'm too fucking worried. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Master? Master? Ah, you have awakened. You gave me quite the startle. Do you not remember? You suddenly started staring off into the distance. And you would not respond to anything I said. <laughs> I thought you were playing a prank on me. Your hand? Oh, yes, I did not let go of it. For if I had, we would be in quite the predicament. Someone approaching the mansion, you say? You saw them? Those images were not shown to you by me. If you saw something, then it was by your own powers. I wonder what kind of powers the Master has. But if you think about it, that is nothing unusual. You are, after all, the master of this house. You should in all actuality be able to do anything I can do by yourself, master. So it is very possible you could have knowledge that I do not. Now, let us return to the mansion's tale. After the second beast paid a visit, Bestia began to destabilize again. The white-haired girl would soothe his heart, but the calm was only ephemeral. He was like a cracked glass ball. If you dropped him, that would be the end. If you put too much force into handling him, he would shatter. He was very difficult to care for. And cracks did not heal. The damage still remains even if the two sides appear to be held together firmly in place. Furthermore, they slowly, gradually, and without intervention spread. The beast appeared to be afraid of someone's voice. He would on occasion stare into empty space and shout, cover his ears, and groan. One day, he shattered all the windows in the mansion, crushed the silverware I had just polished to a shine, and destroyed all the mirrors. Interesting. Huh. Huh. This is really reminiscent of Umineko. That part especially. I assume he did not want to see his beastly self. More. There's more. There's still more that reflects my image. Windows, mirrors, faces, dishes. They all show my reflection. What are you doing? I have no need of anything that reflects me. You can't understand that, can't you? Why? You're going to cut your hands like that. 
tracing the wall with her fingers, the white-haired girl approached Bestia. She stretched her spindly fingers out towards the beast's rugged hands. Her hand, his hands were wet with blood from his frenzied attempts to destroy anything reflective in the house. Look at all these cuts. Stop! You're going to dirty your hands! Get back! No, I will not. It's no use. No matter how many times you call me a human, the mirrors tell another story. Not just the mirrors. Everything reflective shouts, Beast! Angry! Angry! Angrily! Look at how precarious I am. It's hideous. Pitiful. I thought it was all over when I protected you from the beast. But that image keeps coming back to me. The sight of another beast clinging onto me. I can hear its voice. It says I was only ever a beast. A voice? Whose voice? So you don't know. So you can't hear it. You are fighting against something beyond the limits of my perception. Fighting? No, if only it were a fight. You see how freaking strong I am? It speaks to the undeniable truth. Ah, uh, yes. As I have said before, you are not a beast. You look like me. I am certain of it. What? Wait. What? No way. A couple of things come to mind. Your eyes. What? Your... Your red eyes. They show you nothing, but they show me what I am. They show me the difference between us. Are you afraid of my eyes? If, if my eyes cause you fear, if you can see in them your reflection, then you are welcome to destroy them. Rip them f Oh, God damn it, that was her. God damn it. If my eyes cause you fear, if you can see them in your reflection, then you are welcome to destroy them, rip them from me with your own hands. I have no need of them, after all. She could just wear a blindfold. Why? Why would you go so far from me? You... The voice says you are laughing at me. That deep down you ridicule me. Do you believe that? After all the time we spent together... I... I don't know. I'm starting to lose confidence. I believe you. I think I believe you. But I find myself wavering. I'm losing sight of myself. And of you, of everything, in all my memories, I'm a beast. The voice says I was always this way, which I suppose means I am a beast. I can't be anything but. Oh God, what is the voice? Oh God, this might be something similar to Mineko. Oh God, oh my God. <laughs> Do not trust the voice. Trust me instead. I... I do not want to make another mistake. To do something like run away. Because I am so weak-willed. Is she remembering with Mel? Oh my god. I do not understand this woman. She's so pure-hearted. So beautiful. Like hope personified. I want to understand, to believe her. I was sure I could do it, but I keep failing. Why am I losing my grip on everything? 
Our words not enough to convince you. What? Our words not enough to convince you that you are not a beast. Then see for yourself. Feel for yourself. That there is but one difference between us. What? What are you doing? I assume our skin and our hair and our eyes are different colors. But those do not count as a difference. The only thing that differs between us is our sex. <sighs> Hold on. Damn! White haired girl. Okay. She is. Wow. She's really going there. In his other sh utter shock, Bestia was frozen in place. And he was right to be surprised. The sound of rustling fabric shook the air in the forlorn mansion. She had placed her hand on the sleeve of her garments and began to disrobe. Before long. Damn. Okay. I didn't think she was going to go there. Before long, gaze upon me. She was standing there completely undressed. Her body was incomparably beautiful. Slender, not an ounce of excess fat on her. The sight of her was impressive, almost divine. Even I let out a gasp when I saw her. Damn, jeez. She really likes him, actually. See for yourself. This was the first time Bessie had ever seen the white haired girl unclothed. Though they slept in the same bed, as I said before, they did not have a physical relationship. She grasped his unmoving hand and guided it toward her. She moved his hand across her flesh, across the curve of her shoulder, down her arm, and pressed it against her chest firmly enough for him to feel her beating heart. Do you think this causes stirring within him? <laughs> Is there any man for whom a touch of a woman's skin would not? Well, I mean, I think 5% of the population at least. Especially one so beautiful as her. However, he was not aroused. Why do you think that was? Because a beast cannot lust after a human? I believe you know the answer. Ugh. Are you crying? Could, could you smile for me? What? I want to see your smile. Like this. I'm not sure I'm doing a good job. No, you're doing fine. Your smile. It's so pretty. It calms me. Warms my heart. I think I know someone. Somewhere. Who has that same smile. Okay, back to a flashback here. Thank you for seeing me off. Don't mention it. I learned so much about this town thanks to you. You made my stay here quite enjoyable. Ah! What's the matter? You're looking rather glam. I wonder. Huh? I wonder. Oh, that's, uh... That was Pauline. I wonder. I wonder why the sea exists. I was born in a port town, so it's always been there for me. This huge, never ending, expansive, magnificent ocean. Far too big for a single, measly little human like me to cross. It's so pretty. It is. I feel like I understand why you like the sea. But right now, I can't help wondering why God created such an enormous sea. 
why he didn't make the world smaller. Um, I'm sorry. I'm talking nonsense. Not at all. I'll probably be back eventually. That's just part of the job. And will you have lunch at the seaside restaurant again? <laughs> Quite likely. And I'll bet you it'll be mostly meat too. Was your stomach able to handle it? I'll train up for next time. <laughs> your ship is going to embark soon. Yeah. Will people get mad you're not helping them prepare? Most likely. Then you should hurry off. Yeah. Pauline? Huh? I just wanted to thank you again. Um, I appreciate you taking so much time to show me around. I is that all? Um, no. I don't know why, but I was considering leaving without telling you this. I'd like you to tell me. What? Oh my god. I feel better if you turn me down. What? My homeland is only getting more isolated. Unlike your country, mine is not eager to associate with the rest of the world. I probably don't even have their patronage anymore. What I'm saying is, I have absolutely no stability. Oh my god, he's thinking of her. What a sweetheart. Oh god. I can't even say for sure when I'll be, whether I'll be back. So. You're right. There's nothing but obstacles. I'm sure my mom would be opposed as well. But I've fallen for you. The way you look staring out at the sea. The shape of your lips when you smile at me. The kindness in your voice. The more time I spend with you, the deeper I fall in love with you. The whole world could separate us. And these feelings would not change. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, damn. Uh, you beat me to it. <laughs> if I waited, I don't think you would have ever gotten to it. I'll say it myself, too. I love you, Pauline. I fell for you the most the moment I first saw you. I promise. We will meet again. Uh-huh. I promise. I'll be waiting. Thank you. It's visible in both of our eyes. This love strong enough to wash away all our tribulations. It's right there, plain as day, each of our eyes. Hello, on your roll, welcome to the stream. Mine and his. Did you hear something? Huh? It sounded like someone's voice. I didn't hear anything. Must have been your imagination. Oh. You want to turn back, lady? I gotta say, the way he just calls her lady like that, I don't know, it makes him sound like this, like, you know, badass kind of, like, Indiana Jones, like, you know, super manly type guys, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of cute. I, I really do like that, actually. Huh? You're looking nervous. Uh, I'm just fine. Uh, let's keep moving. Uh, but there is one thing. 
What? My name isn't Lady, it's Pauline. This again? Lady is so distant. I don't like being called that. So, call me Pauline. Polly. Oh my god! Oh my god, he gave me a nickname! Oh my god! How's that? Can I call you Polly? Oh, come on! I'd really rather you call me Pauline. I'm, only, I'm an only child, so he's always wanted a younger brother or sister. But Polly makes it sound like I'm the younger one! I'm not your brother, and I'm not a child. Damn! Oh god, Javi, I think you just got brother zoned hard. Oh god. You called yourself a kid yesterday, though. Yeah, well, yesterday I didn't confess to you. That's not what I meant. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Poor Javi. Poor Javi. Oh god. Oh, fine. You can call me Polly. It's not my full name, but I'm glad you're calling me something other than Lady Javi. <laughs> and that's what I'll do. Oh, you left! Be quiet. You're no fun. There's a mansion up ahead, standing atop the cliff. I can't say why exactly, but I feel like it's something that shouldn't be there. What do you mean? It feels out of place in this area. Does the mansion move around? Does the mansion move around? And something seems off about it. Like it's somehow ethereal. And could disappear at any moment. Damn, so the mansion itself is like some magical thing that moves around. Nah, I'm probably just overthinking things. Sorry, that was stupid of me to say. It's okay. We still can't see the mansion Javi's talking about from here. Just dense, overgrown forest. But for some reason, I can sense that we're approaching it. It's a strange sensation. Anxiety is bubbling up from deep inside me, and at the same time, I feel like I could voice into tears. Not out of fear, but familiarity. Familiarity? I've never been to this country before. Everything I'm seeing is new to me. There's nothing at all for me to find familiar. Why then? Oh my god. I hope- oh my god, I hope she's not Nelly. Is she Nelly? She might be. If it is reincarnation. Why then? I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you sure you want to do this? I am. You agreed not to go inside. Don't break that promise. Hello, David Lohman. Welcome to the stream. It's okay. Don't worry. I'm sorry for putting you through this, making you relieve, relive unpleasant memories. But thank you for accompanying me when you haven't gotten the game from it. Don't worry, I'll just look around. I'm only searching for a sign he was there. And when I'm done, we'll turn to the village together. Alright. Okay. Now let's go. We push our way through the dark, dense woods. And then, like the world fading into view after a dream, a mansion appears before us. It rests quietly upon a cliff against the backdrop of Emerald Ocean. This is the Beast's Den. It should by all rights be a magnificent scene, but the blue sky and jade sea clash with the building. It appears alone. Isolated precariously from the rest of the world.
Yep, this is it. This is the mansion where the beast dwells. Careful not to make any noise, we draw nearer to this house. The inexplicable structure sitting in between the forest and the cliff. The fluttering I feel in my heart does not seem to be caused only by fear of the beast. The weeds and plants growing unchecked around the house are tall enough for Javi to hide in. I imagine that's how he approached the mansion the first time, lurking in the undergrowth. Overgrowth, I should say. Hello, Belly Tom. Welcome to the stream. Say, how the people of this village thought about leaving the area? Moving somewhere else? Away from the beast den? Only those with enough savings can do that. Leave without money and you'll just die in a ditch somewhere. Everyone's made their lives here in the village. We have farmland, cattle, ships. It's not easy to let all that go. Not everyone can just hop a boat to another country like you, Polly. We're not wealthy. Sorry, I... I didn't mean to offend you. I know. I was being too harsh. You're just... ignorant. So naive you believe the whole world is this perfect, magical place. I am loving it so far. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. If you're capable of seeing the world like that, there's no reason you should look at it any other way. You know, for as mature as you can be, Javi, you're also rather cynical. <laughs> well, pardon me. He's like saying, well, excuse me, princess. When you... Huh? When you, when you said you would take me to your town. That kind of made my day. Oh my god! Oh, I ship these two so hard! Oh my god! Oh god, oh god. But I remember, then I remember how the first door turned out. Oh god. They go together so well. There's nothing left for me in this village. You'll find plenty of new things, I'm sure. You can even make some friends in my town. After all, you still got a long life ahead of you, Javi. So you should make it a fun one. You make it sound like I'm about to throw myself off a cliff. I, I didn't mean it like that. We should try to keep quiet from here on out. Uh, okay. Got it. As we draw closer to the mansion, I can see the ivy twisted across its stone walls. I press my back against the wall and take a few deep breaths. There's a window next to me. If there really is a beast, if there really is a terrible man-eating monster inside, I'm in danger if it catches me. Javi's eyes entreat me not to get any closer. But I have to see. I have to see if there's a mountain of corpses inside these walls. If, there even, if there's even the slightest trace of him. I'm just going to have a look. Peek in from the outside without being noticed. Uh-oh. That's all I'm going to do. Is she gonna, like, see the be uh, bestia and the white-haired girl, like, going at it? Oh, boy. And when it's done, I'll go home. Through the window, I see a dimly illuminated hallway. Like the garden, the inside is desolate. But there's still the sense that someone lives here. It's not completely abandoned. Polly... I see something moving inside the mansion. I hold my breath so whatever is in there does not sense my presence, does not sense my gaze. And then... Wah! A shadow whisks past, 
No. Polly? Hey, Polly! Open up! Please open the door! Stop it, you idiot! Just what do you think you're doing? Please open the door! Polly, you promised me! Have you lost your mind? The only thing in here is a... It's not a beast! Huh? It's not a beast! A beast isn't living in this mansion! You're wrong! It is! There's a beast in there! A bestia! Get away from the door! The beast! It's not a beast! Open the door! Open the... Huh? Huh? I knew it! I knew it! I was right! You're alive! What?! We literally had a fucking CG! That bestia stabbed that guy through the fucking heart! Are you telling me that that was his, like, twin brother or some shit? What?! Wait! What the fuck?! You're alive! You're alive! You're alive! I never stopped believing! I knew you wouldn't die! Would you? Yukimasa? I... I have faith you were still alive. I want to prove it. What is Yukimasa? That sounds Japanese or something. And I was right! Oh god. I'm so glad I had faith. Oh no, she's gonna die, I have a feeling. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I'm so glad I didn't give up. I missed you so... All this time. I've never stopped thinking about you. I've never stopped imagining a reunion. Oh god, oh no, oh no, oh god, oh god. Yukimasa, I'm so glad you're alive. That's his name. Stop it, Polly. Get away from him. That's, that's... The Beast! Oh no! What?! No! You'll kill me if I do not kill you! And so I'm gonna show you that I will! Wait, what?! What?! Wait, what's going on here?! Wait! So that was just a random ass guy? But then why did he think he was a beast? Did he lose it? He must have lost his memory or something? But then why did everyone call him a beast? What? I must show you that I'm serious! I must kill you you just won't understand! What the fuck? You just won't understand! <laughs> oh my god! They played a trick on the reader. They showed the portrait when the beast was talking to the no-name merchant. And the reader assumed that's the portrait for the merchant. Oh my god. What? Then why did everyone call him a beast? If I don't show you firsthand, you just won't understand! I'll make you understand. I'll make your flesh and bones understand. Kill. I'll kill you. I'll kill you! My god! Then why does everybody think, oh my god? That's it. Cry for me. Beg for your life. Pray for my mercy. Weep and struggle and suffer and die. Look at this. No one can stand up to me. Humans have no chance against beasts. <laughs> I can't laugh in that voice, goddammit! 
Oh my god. Oh my fucking god! Is he... No! 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 Yuki Masa? What's wrong? No! What? What the fuck happened to him? What's the Nira? It's me, Pauline. I came to find you. I've missed you so much. Oh no! Yuki Masa? I'm sorry, I still don't understand your language. Hey, wait! Where are you going? Stop it, Polly! Don't go after him! Polly! Oh no! Why? Why are you running from me? Don't you recognize me? It's pulling your love! Wh why? <laughs> Your katana! Why? Why would you point that at me? He lost his memory from the shipwreck, and just everybody was like super fucking racist against him, and oh my god. Oh god. Oh no, 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 oh no! Oh god. You scared me. What's gotten into you? Hey, what's the matter? Oh my god. No, no, no! <laughs> Yuki Masa, do you know who I am? No! No, no, no! <sighs> what happened? You used to be able to speak my language so fluently. Let's talk. What do you say? He did lose his memory, didn't he? Oh my god. <laughs> Put that thing away, please, it's dangerous. <sighs> oh god, no! Why? You cut me. Oh god! Blade held high above my head glimmers. Why? He's the beast? Tell me, Yukimasa. Did you kill all those villagers? Are you going to kill me? Why? No, no, stop! <laughs> you okay? It's me. It's only. Oh, God! Please, open your eyes. Let's go back to my town. 
I never got the chance to ask if you wanted to move to my country. Then we wouldn't have to wait so long to see each other. What do you think, Yukimasa? Bad in hell! Oh god! Why? Tell me why? <laughs> Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! What happened here? I'm grateful that you couldn't see. Because you would certainly think me a beast if you were able to see this. like me broke into the mansion was it I protected you did I not I protected you say that I protected you I did this for you actually a beast I can hear a woman's voice. I can't keep my eyes open. Oh, that's Pauline. Sorry. I wonder who she is. They seem like they're really close. Did you choose someone else? No! Then you could have just said so. It wouldn't. Oh my god! What the fuck? What the actual fuck? Oh god! No! What the fuck? What the actual fuck? We've been apart for so long. But this just kind of hurt. It hurts. I can't take it. Just once. Could you turn back and say my name? I, I proved it. That you're still alive. We, we were lovers, weren't we? So why? You said you wanted a peaceful life. I can't take this. Bad. You keep Matsa. I can't take. Can't take this. I don't need every, anything extravagant. This ordinary life slowly growing older. Having three and maybe four children. Would never fight and eventually before I knew it, I'd be an old lady. <laughs> Thinking uh, it was an uneventful life, but it was the best I could have asked for. That's the life I want, and what about you? Yes, I do wish for a piece of life with you. <laughs> Polly, I couldn't, again, I couldn't do 
Oh my god. Wow, that was n that was just pure despair. Oh god. I'll never cross you. My god. Oh god. And that's not even the top 5 sad scenes. Are you fucking serious? Oh god. Oh god. Master. Master. What is the matter? You look as pale as a ghost. What? I lied to you? I've not told you a single falsehood, Master. Uh, about the beast. That means you were seeing her memories, then. Is that so? That must have been quite difficult to witness. But I assure you, I have told you no lies. Bestia was convinced he was a beast. And as a servant of this house, it is my responsibility to present my former master to you as he saw himself. Oh my god! This would have been a very different story had you not discovered the truth. A beast meets a white-haired girl and learns humanity. That tale would have been far easier on you, I'm sure. By remaining in the dark and seeing the story through his eyes alone, you would not have seen. You would have not have had to witness that poor girl's miserable death. And that perhaps would have been better for you. But the reality you observe through her eyes changes the truth of his tale. And it sounds like the visions you had did not run in parallel to the events I described for you, but took place slightly earlier in time. Which means that yes. Her fate was set in stone well before you ever saw it. I do wonder, though. Why did Vestia believe the woman to be a beast like him? That is true. That is also true. Perhaps it was because her hair, eye, and skin color were similar to his own. The poor young woman called upon the mansion did indeed resemble Vestia. They were of a similar race. Half of her blood was of the same race as his. But was that the only reason? Would that be enough for him to mistake her for a beast? I have my own theory. His memories may have played a role. I suspect Bestia, Bestia was afraid of the memories from when he was human would cause him to waver. But that is simply my own speculation. Perhaps he had merely lost his grip on reality. How well have you come to understand, Bestia, Master? You do appear to think he was an ordinary human who believed himself to be a beast. But where does the line between man and beast truly lie? That I do not know. Master, like Bestia, you were to lose your memories and endure persecution and degradation until you broke. Would you still remember those you care for? <sighs> now our tale is not yet over. The web of misfortune was tightly, oh, so tightly entangled. It could not be unraveled. 
Let us return now from her memories to the point we left off in our story. <laughs> Just after the white-haired girl had disrobed, showing Messia the difference between her and him. This was just several days following the young woman's death. Blood in the hall had, not be had been cleaned up, and there was no trace of it any longer. He had made a tremendous mistake, though the only people aware of that mistake are you and I. There was perchance, perhaps a chance that the white-haired girl had realized, but she knew nothing of the woman. So I entreat you not to fault the white-haired girl for trying to be kind to Vestia. She is without sin. In any and all times. The beast. No, the man made the white-haired girl put her clothes back on. He seemed to have calmed down a bit. <sighs> After examining her body and compare- Oh, down, damn, I accidentally clicked. After examining her body and comparing it with his own, he was once again coming to think he might not be a beast. In the past, he would have rejoiced to have proof of his own humanity. <sniffs> However, it was for him that the seed of several new doubts. You... You said I am human. Yes. Do you still believe this? I certainly do. You are simply mistaken. You believe yourself to be a beast because of what the villagers said. Why did they call me a beast? If, if I were able to see, I could surely answer all your questions. But I could not. So all I can offer you is my conjecture. Go on. Tell me. I suspect that you do not come from this country. No, you do not come from this continent. You came to this continent from far, far away. Perhaps even across the seas. <laughs> This land has been cast into turmoil by the war. <sighs> Fortunately, no fighting reached the village, but... <sighs> it has blocked trade routes, stripped them of their independence, and cast a dark shadow over their hope. Oh, you guys, I just... Oh, God. Seriously. Oh, I think all the portraits in this game are absolutely beautiful looking. Like, seriously. <sniffs> they are... Quite devastated, I imagine. <sniffs> and then you showed up. From what I have heard, this area is not particularly friendly to people from other countries. Even less so from those from another continent. I doubt they do much about distant lands, so they've probably never seen someone like you before. But in addition, you would have been wearied and worn. I guess you were emaciated, wasting away. Enough so that you did not even look like yourself. Do you remember how you arrived at the village? When I woke up, I was on the beach. I don't remember anything before that. My joints all ached. I was incredibly thirsty. I was in so much pain, I sought help. But nothing I said got through to the villagers. I did not understand what they said either.
But the one thing you did understand was that they were calling you Bestia. Right. They also understood that the word was used to describe beasts. The way they looked at me, it wasn't normal, so I... I imagine at first, they simply didn't want the trouble. They didn't actually think you were a beast. Simply that this wretched man, unfamiliar in appearance, who had washed ashore, resembled a beast. Washed ashore? You were in accident, were you not? While crossing the sea? I... I do not remember. I can't remember. No, I mustn't remember. If I'm not a beast, that means the other beast wasn't one either. Oh, God. What did the other beast look like? It looks somehow similar to me. Its hair color, skin color, eye color. And the way it spoke seemed vaguely familiar. Which means it was... It was... I cannot accept that if I do. And that means I have done something terrible. No. What? I... They did call me a beast. I was in fact a beast. As I've been saying, that's because... Tell me that I'm a beast. Please. Let him remain a beast. How do you imagine he saw the world? I cannot even begin to fathom, but you can never know what someone else sees. And there is nothing to say they see the same thing as you, as you and I have seen different things. So too did the man and his lover see different things. Or perchance the true shape of the world is visible only through the white haired girl's sightless eyes. Do you think the reason he so stubbornly rejected his human memories is because he had taken the life of his beloved? <sighs> I personally believe that there was more to it than that. I am just still... I'm sorry, you guys. Jeez. <sighs> that was just... Oh my god. They just rubbed the salt in that wound. They rubbed the salt in that wound. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. That was like insult upon insult upon injury. Oh, my God. Seriously. Oh, God. I just, I just, seriously, I just. <laughs> that, that was just, oh my god. <sighs> Someday you shall remember. You shall remember everything. <sighs> I will not allow you to avert your eyes. Remember that you have always always been a beast incapable of saving anyone only of taking remember and suffer agonize writhe anguish grieve suffer oh my god oh my god such a damn shame our homeland is but a stone's throw away, and they still won't let us in. Just how long are they going to maintain this stance? Regrettable, isn't it, son? Oh my god. Yes, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Captain Osama. 
We can make it this far on the white men's ship, but they give us no response to our missives. I'm not sure it's even reaching the magistrate's hands. Is it so difficult to even be the slightest bit accommodating to your fellow countrymen? They seem to be treating the white men rather poorly as well. I hear they imprison them on a tiny man-made island. That's no way to make friends. Well, all things considered, we can hardly call this our homeland anymore anyway. For how many generations has your family lived overseas again? I am the third. I see. Then I don't have any attachment to this land. That's not true. I may never have the opportunity to set foot on our soil, but my spirit dwells within this land. My grandfather has told me much about this country. Okay. So the mansion clearly moves around. Of her four rich, vibrant seasons and boundless beauty. I am deeply grateful that you invited me on this voyage to visit her, Captain Osama. I have finally, if only at a distance, laid eyes upon my home. I cannot say when this era may draw to a close, but I hope that the time comes when we can proudly proclaim her our motherland. You can't find food this good back home. <laughs> I eagerly await the day that becomes true. Indeed, as do I. I've lied to her. She believes I was born in the Orient. But in truth, I have never once set foot in that country. I was born in Europe. My family has not been permitted to return since my grandparents left. I can still remember as clear as day. The look of profound regret on my grandfather's face as he departed from this world. He bequeathed unto me a katana, and on that day, that blade became the one object binding me to my homeland. I could not bring myself to tell her that I am disallowed to return home. I did not want her to think that I had been forsaken by my country, that my country would do such a thing. However, some part of me believes that there was more to it than that. A smuggler? Yeah, I never would have expected it, not on this ship. One of the crew was conspiring with a government official. He hid unreported goods on board and delivered them in secret. What goods? Silver coins. Spanish coins trade for more money than they're worth as a currency. The official was sentenced to commit seppuku. But we are responsible for our own crew's punishment. I am still trying to decide how to handle it. Have him commit seppuku as well. The sailor has brought shame upon the entire ship. If he is made to take responsibility for his actions, then perhaps we can minimize the damage to our reputation. You make a fair point. Unfortunately, he is not of this land. I doubt is he is familiar with the ritual. <sniffs> then I shall serve as his second and ensure he dies without issue. Here is Kasha Kunina. I think that's what it's called, right? I think. Have you lost your mind? I have been trained in the art. It's unlikely I should fail. <sniffs> You're not a samurai, though. I was born into a family of samurai. At least it was uh, it was until three generations ago. But that blood still courses through my veins. Very well then. This is how we shall do it. We now commence the ritual seppuku of a fellow crewman, Seedorf. Seedorf has, in violation of restrictions set in place by the Shogunate, committed the grave crime of smuggling prohibited goods into the country. In order to atone for this betrayal of the trust of both nations, he vows to take his life here before you. Do you have any last words? 
I deeply regret that we should have to lose a companion with whom we have traveled the seven seas in this manner. Do it. Wasn't me. What? It wasn't me. I've been set up. I didn't smuggle anything. I don't know about any silver coins. I've been framed. Believe me. Why should it? I've just sliced my own. Y Yukimasa. He said the accusations were false. Oh my god. Oh my god. This keeps twisting around and around. What the actual fuck? Oh my god. Oh my god. No fucking way. Oh my god. Oh my god. Lies to escape punishment. I could not allow him to continue saving himself and us when his fate was already decided. He would only serve to tarnish the ship's honor. But, but... An investigation was performed. It's our duty to trust those results. You're right. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes, you're right. Good work. Now this needs to be cleaned up. Yes, sir. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm sure I was mistaken, but I would like to ask you anyway. Were you smiling as you did it? Fucking hell! So he's not even a good guy either! He's just rotten to the core, isn't he? You must have been seeing things. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Was that really the only reason I couldn't bring myself to tell her the truth? <sighs> what? What was that dream? Was that... Was that from my memories? <sighs> no. No! Osama, I've never met that man. Or that woman. <sighs> no. No, 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 no. I was... No. I was... No, it wasn't me. I don't. I don't. I... I don't. I don't! I don't remember. I don't remember anything. Not a thing. Not a single thing. I'm a beast. A beast! I made not a human. I don't need those memories. <laughs> are you there? Are you there? Where are you? Come. Come to me. Be with me. Peace. My peace. Where are you? Where have you gone? Why? Why are you not at my side? <sighs> Don't remember anything. Stop remembering! Oh my god. Is that a silver coin? Spanish silver? Some weeks after we set off back west, I found a silver coin in the ship's hold. I don't know if I got overlooked or if it got overlooked or dropped when I was transporting the rest, but there's just one. The first thing I think when I find it is that I should report it to Captain Asama. But instead, I slipped the coin into my pocket and take my leave of the hold as if nothing ever happened. Not for the purpose of smuggling it for some extra cash. It only has extra value in the East. Back West, it's worth nothing more than its designated value as currency. So again, it's not for want of money. Hmm. 
Well done. It seems Seedorf might have been innocent after all. Perhaps so. And if he had no hand in the smuggling, then I've done a horribly regrettable thing. No, as you said, an investigation was conducted. We had no choice but to believe the information we were given. You mustn't blame yourself. I feel bad for putting such an unpleasant responsibility on you. Not at all. Now, how do we handle this? I can't believe a silver coin was found in someone else's luggage. Wait a minute, then. Why did he want to kill Seedorf? Who the fuck is Seedorf? It would be best to handle this internally. Publicly, we have already made our amends with Seedorf's death. That's true. Though it would be prudent to try and discover from where he is acquiring the coins. So as to prevent another such incident. Oh, God damn it! Sorry. They would be prudent to try and discover from where he was in acquiring the coins, so as to prevent another such incident. Should one of our crew be caught smuggling again, he will not be the only one asked to take responsibility. I have a great sympathy for you, Captain Osama. This is quite the headache. I can't imagine he would just give up his connections just because we asked. We can force him. If he doesn't want to talk, then we can give him some encouragement. But I couldn't. Worry not, Captain Osama. I shall take care of the dirty work. You didn't trouble yourself with anything, Captain. Leave it all to me. Captain? Very well. I leave this in your hands, Yukimasa. Yes, sir. Oh my god! How are you feeling? Hey, Antami, what's the meaning of this? A silver coin was discovered in your luggage. Huh? A silver coin? Interesting. It, seem, it would seem we have quite a knack for acting. Hold on, I don't follow. I thought the smuggling problem was taken care of. So what's going on here? Oh, I see. He wants in on it. He wants in on it. I see. I see that's what's going on. So still, he did something very scummy. Seedorf wasn't the one doing the smuggling. It was you. Like hell. I've never seen any damn silver coins. It's some kind of mistake. Check my bags again. A coin was found in your luggage, regrettably. Captain Osama saw himself. Lies. I swear I've never touched one! Is that so? I swear, never once. Please believe me. I'm no smuggler! <laughs> I've done good work, even on this expedition. You are not someone who gets involved in smuggling! I don't know. What kind of person anyone is? We may have known each other for years, but that doesn't mean I have any way of knowing what you think in private, how you feel, what kind of person you are. You! You smuggled the coins, didn't you? I didn't. I have nothing to do with it! Who is your supplier? I'm telling you, I ain't no smuggler! It just put Captain Osama in an uncomfortable position if you don't talk. We can't risk damaging our homeland's trust any further. I swear, I swear to God, I had nothing to do with it. So you won't tell? How can I tell you something I know nothing about? I see. Y you believe me? So it's very, very important information. Enough so that you can't give it up so easily. In which case, I'll just do what I have to do until you talk. What? What are you... Whenever you're ready to talk, let me know. I'll stop right away. Hey, stop! What are you- Quite the thick fingers you have. Let go! What are you- But it's all meat. 
Your bones are thicker than anyone else's. Ah! My, my finger! Oh, don't not start screaming just yet. That was just the first. Your little finger. Next is your ring finger. Stop! Please do it! I'm begging you! Are you ready to talk? I told you I don't know anything! Too bad. Your middle finger? T t don't! Ah! Your right hand is going to be useless unless, unless if you don't start talking soon. Uh, uh, what do you want me to tell you? I swear I had nothing to do with it! What has you so stubbornly refusing to talk? Is your supplier really worth going to such lengths to protect? No, I can't tell you what I don't know! That's... Ah! All that's left is your thumb. <laughs> Someone get me. Uh, just so we're perfectly clear, everyone on board knows what you did. No one's going to come to a smuggler's aid. God, God, I can't take any more of this. Please stop. Ready to talk? My God, he is the scum of the earth. What will it be? I'll talk! Okay, okay, I'll talk! Now, if anything you tell me is a lie, you can consider your life forfeit. Are you ready to tell me the truth? We will investigate the details of your confession, of course. If you lie, we will find out. Understood? But, 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 I, I... Speak. But... Or can't you? I don't know anything. That's a shame. Ah, ah well, you won't be using your right hand ever again. Oh, there, there are still five fingers on your left. Are you in pain? <coughs> Do you want me to stop? Yes, please. All right. <coughs> Four left. <coughs> that is quite the face. I wish I could show it to you in a mirror. What, what? What is wrong with you? Exactly! You monster! I'm not doing this because I want to. You're the one forcing your, my hand by refusing to talk. Now go on, spit it out. You wouldn't believe anything I said anyway! How long have you been doing this? You're the first. Liar! You sick bastard! It's a truth, though. Then why are you smiling? <laughs> Three left? What'll it be? Will you tell me everything? No lies, no omissions. It wasn't me! It wasn't me! I didn't do anything! <laughs> Two left? It's surprising how easily they break. No! Stop! This is the last one. <laughs> it burns! It burns my fingers! On fire! Now, what next? It burns! It burns! It burns! Are you listening? Hello. Uh, uh. This over a few broken fingers. Uh. Need me to wake you up? Uh. Uh. 
Let me tell you something. I'm the one who put the coin in your luggage. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? He really is a monster! Uh, of course, you don't know anything. <laughs> so let anyone get in here? The silver coin wasn't... <laughs> no, no, don't go shouting things you'll regret. <laughs> it's hard to fight back with your hands in that condition. Having trouble breathing? Huh? Well, are you? You need air. That's a pity. <laughs> I guess it's hard to talk with my hands around your throat, huh? <laughs> Do you want air? <laughs> Alright. Then you can have some air. Don't learn. <laughs> I can see the words written on his face. Why? Why are you doing this? So he really is a monster after all. This is just insane. Why? Now that is a good question. I'm not even sure myself. My God, he is just a straight up psychopath. Oh my god, he is just a straight up psychopath. Hey. Answer me. Well, damn. I missed the opportunity to use my katana. Fucking hell! I tossed the man's body overboard. My story will be that he sneaked out while I wasn't looking. And threw himself into the sea. As I watched the sack of flesh sink into the depths, I am thoroughly shocked to realize I don't feel the slightest bit bad about what I've done. No regret. No remorse. Nothing. I comprehend, of course, that the things I've done are reprehensible. That they're evil. But that knowledge wasn't sufficient to restrain my urges. There's an itch I felt deep within my chest ever since the moment my blade sunk his teeth into Seedorf's neck. I don't know what to call it, but I feel like I'm floating. Like everything swirling about inside me has been unleashed, set free. There's also an edge of anxiety, though. If I continue down this path, what might I transform into? Despite feeling not the slightest bit guilty about the horrible things I've done. I still fear this life I've made slipping away from me and there's the goddamn train! Fucking hell! Uh, there's that goddamn train in the background! I want something to anchor me. What exactly am I? Is this what I wanted to become? The kind of man who can take another's life without flinching. Fully aware of his actions. And if that's truly what I am, perhaps it would make things easier if I did lose everything. Oh my god. Uh, oh god, Pauline is back! I can't even... Oh god, oh god! Uh, oh, don't scare me like that! Where did you pick up a word like ninja take? A ninja ninja. I never took you for someone so pretentious. <laughs> I'm sorry. You just look so much like a rabbit there. The way you were tossing your head back and forth, looking around for me. Oh, you. Ninja is something you call a child. 
I'm not a little girl anymore. I'm sorry, really. Don't be so mad, Pauline. <laughs> I'm not mad at all. It's, it's been a year and a half. We finally got to see each other again. Oh, that we do. Did you have any trouble out at sea? Did you fall ill or get caught in a storm? Or run into any kind of danger at all? No, there was no trouble. Everything went fine. Without incident. The sea god was watching over us, I suppose. Fucking hell! Fucking hell! Bye, David Lohman. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god! What the fuck is wrong with this guy? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What? Who am I? Who am I? Who? Who? What is this room? What are those colored windows? Why do I see a floor in the mansion? I know what this is. It's an angel. The angel. The angel is it's looking, looking at me and laughing. The angel looking down on me and laughing. What are you doing? The angel. The angel is laughing at me. The angel. So I... The angel. You. You. What were you? I went to the kitchen to get a drink of water. You have nothing to worry about. I will not run away from you. I... I... I am not human. Am I? I'm not a human. You are... NOT A HUMAN! You are... You... It's alright. I imagine it's quite disconcerting, having lost your memories. But no matter what happens, you will always be you. Don't be afraid. Are those... the words of encouragement I truly wanted to hear? Am I? Am I afraid of being myself? I don't know. Do you think about it? I'm a beast. A beast with no memories! <laughs> oh my god! This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable story. Seriously, wow. Holy shit. This story. And this one fucking section isn't even over yet. I can't believe it. Oh my god. <laughs> His psyche drifted erratically between human and beast. If he accepted itself, himself as human, it might cause memories better left buried to return to him. If he accepted himself as a beast, in exchange for his memories, he would no longer be able to rejoin human society. The white-haired girl fervently supported him in these precarious times. I was quite amazed. I had never imagined she would grow to be such a strong woman. Nevertheless, God is a cruel master. For what strength he gave her spiritually, he took an equal part from her physically. Though she persisted, day in and day out, to stay by the man's side, one day she suddenly fell ill. With her in the throes of a high fever, and not knowing the cause, he fell into perpetual panic. 
There was no medicine in the mansion. They could hardly manage to put together sufficiently nutritious meals. Though there was no medicine, maybe there was something else that could make her feel better. However, everything he could think that he could think of required him to leave the house. Hey, hey. Is there anything you would like? Uh, when he's like this, I'm just going to... You know, for the present one, I'm just going to use the beast voice, because that's what he wants to see himself as, so... Is there anything you would like? Anything. I would like. I'm considering visiting the village. I see. You're going to the village. I thought I might be able to get some medicine. I would prefer to bring a doctor here, but uh, no one would come if they learned you in this mansion. So... He was planning to put on a disguise to enter the village as a person. The white-haired girl smiled when he shared his idea. She had, after all, always wanted him to think of himself as human. However, because she was so pure-hearted, she did not comprehend the full extent of the slaughter he had confessed to committing. The revenge he had taken on those who had chased him around. How sinister is cackling and furious his reaping. She did not grasp just how serious it was. She had taken the faith that Bestia had kindness in his heart. Oh my god. If you could not get any medication, then buy me some oranges, please. Oranges? This is a land blessed by the sun. You should be able to find some wonderful fresh oranges. Will that make you feel better? Yes, it should. Okay. Bestia's mind was made up. He would don the skin of a human for her to protect the peace he had. He would return to the place that had left him with many painful memories. It was to him the source of his fear. Whenever he left his guard down, their shouts would play back in his mind. Bestia, bestia, bestia. <sniffs> Hideous beast. Though he had physically conquered the people who lived there, Bestia's memories of the village still haunted him. But her health meant more to him than any of that. He was willing to cast aside his fear if it, if it meant the white-haired girl would recover. The girl still, is still in her bed. He made his way to, out of the mansion. He crossed the overgrown forest, pushing forward one step at a time, all the while trying to brush aside his apprehension, until he arrived at the village. This is where they called me a beast, where I was almost killed, and where I killed them. I look different than I did then. I imagine a few years have passed. I'm dressed differently too, but can I play the part? Can I act as a convincing enough human? I have no choice. There were no other villagers. I can't let her die. Excuse me, could you answer a question for me? A village man is looking at me, only for a moment. But for me, that moment is torturously long. A faint look of panic crosses his face, perhaps in fear of my appearance. He's staring at me. I bet, I bet it's, I bet this is Javi. Will he point his finger and call me a beast? Where the other vill villagers come to kill me. However, I haven't seen you around here before. He didn't recognize me. Yes, I come from a faraway land, 
And I'm unfamiliar with this area, so... <laughs> You're dressed like a nobleman. On a secret trip or something? Something of the sort, yes. You look really pale, though. Searching for a doctor? Uh, yes, but uh, not for me. Uh, my companion has come down with a fever. Sorry to hear it. Well, uh, I'd love to introduce you, but he's out right now. And he won't be back for a few, for a few days. I... I see. And where might I be able to buy fruit? Oh, uh, there's a shop just around that corner. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. Do take care, traveler. It's dangerous out there. <sighs> you have no idea. Oh god, he's gonna run into Javi, isn't he? Oh god. I'm starting to attract attention. But not the same kind as before. They don't look at me with revulsion, hatred, or furious indignation. They're simply curious. This, the village feels different than last time. Could it have changed this drastically? Or is it because I really did look like a beast then? And now I look like a human. I don't know. Excuse me. Me? Yes. I would like to buy some fruit. Some oranges. Oranges? Already? Just a sec? The fruit vendor doesn't recognize me as the beast either. Any other year, they'd be a lot plumper than this. <sniffs> but this year, we've had the end of the war. And this whole mess with the beast, and it's been just crazy. Wow, they have no idea that he's the beast. Holy shit. If you'd like, how about you come back in a few years and try our oranges again? They'll be several times better, I assure you. I'll keep that in mind. You bet, that'll be... I'm sorry, I don't have any local currency. Would this suffice? What? How is... How is... No good, I take it? No, 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 no! On the contrary! It's hardly fair for you. Trading a jewel for a few oranges! That's all I have to offer. I hope you can exchange it for money. Sure! You nobles are something else! Noble? Aren't you? Though if you wandered around dressed too well, you'd put yourself in danger. You might find yourself stripped bare by a bandit, or perhaps even catch the attention of the beast. The beast? Everyone mentions the beast. They speak of me. Have you heard the tales? I... I have not. There's a beast den not too far from this village. It's attacked before, and we've been living in fear. Never knowing when it might attack again. But that all ends today. Oh no! Are they gonna think the white-haired girl is the beast? Oh god, and attack her! The men have finally found their spines. They're all go they've all got together and went over to exterminate it. Oh my god! And you'll never guess who's responsible. A kid. A little boy spearheading the attack. Oh no. Never would have expected a little kid to whip out our all lazily cowardly men into a shape. Oh god. Oh god. This is turning out the worst possible. Oh my god. Everything went so fucking wrong. God. Everything has turned out to be the worst possible outcome. The actual fuck! The boy's the only one who knows where the beast's den. Oh, hold on. What about your oranges? Oh, God. The men have banded together. And they're going to kill the beast. Why now? Why would I'm not there? I'm the beast. I'm right here. I'm what you're trying to hunt. The only person at the mansion right now is her. He regretted not asking the fruit vendor how long ago the party set off. Though what good would that knowledge have done him? He had to hurry back regardless. The sun was beginning to set, draping the surroundings in a deep blackness. As if to keep him from returning home, 
The knight wrapped its hand around his head, covering both eyes. In what direction did he have to return to the mansion? He stormed through the forest, and eventually the mansion appeared before him, like the world fading into view after a dream. Bestia was a temper tempest in the night, blowing through the overgrowth through toward the house. Please, make it in time. I, I need her. I need the peace that she provides me. The last thing I want is for her to die. In the blink of an eye, he was through the door, charging down the mansion's halls. He could not tell anyone else inside, though. All he could hear was the whoosh of the wind blowing into the house from somewhere. It seemed a window was open. Where are you? Where have you gone? Answer me, please answer me! He cried out the girl's name again and again until his throat was sore and his voice hoarse. But she did not respond. He rushed into her bedchamber. Hey! Hello! Hello! Where are you? Where are you? Answer me! The man swung his head back and forth so hard he thought he might break his own neck. And when he made to look down, he slipped, falling on his tailbone. He felt something slick on his hands, a sensation he would recognize anywhere. The liquid was still warm. No, that could not be. It can't. It can't! It could not be! Muttering incomprehensibly in, in fear, he crawled back through the door of her chamber into the corridor. Like a genuine beast, he followed the trail of slippery fluid on all floors. The trail glim glimmered like red wine. It stretched down the hall, past the living room, smeared across the floor like it had been wiped down with a mop. The man crawled and crawled and crawled, until at last he reached the stairs leading down the cellar. The ruby trail continued. From beyond the door, he could hear men's voices. <sighs> <sighs> With a howl, the man stumbled down the stairs, throwing over the wooden door. Looks like it's beast time. Oh my god. His first impression was a sense of blood was suffocating. And indeed, there he discovered the white-haired girl. <sighs> he found himself unable to even scream. Her once porcelain skin was no longer even sickly pale. It was now the bloodless color of dirt. She was sprawled haphazardly on the cellar floor, dried blood stains around her half open mouth, and those lips were naturally lacking the form of Rose's sheen. Her body was covered with an array of wounds, but the most prominent was a man's singular sword standing tall on her chest. Are you guys fucking blind? This is the bestia, he doesn't look like the same. It's him. Are you fucking blind, Javi? Are you fucking blind? That's clearly a girl. He's the same guy. He's the bestia. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Did they turn to... Oh my god. Okay, now everyone's looking at him. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Several villagers surrounded him at the pass of a young boy. He's gotten himself dressed up all proper and fancy. But good clothes don't make him a good man. Isn't that right, you bestia? No! You murderer! <sighs> Why? Why did you kill her? Why'd you kill her? Why'd you kill her? Why'd you kill her? Why'd you kill her? Why? Why? You want to know why? Her death was an accident, I'd say. I feel bad about what happened. But any woman who would live with a man like you must be a witch. Oh, God. Does that hurt? Are you hurting right now, you bestia? Then maybe now you understand. You not only stole my parents and friends from me, you ripped the last shot of hope I had from my hands! Do you get it? Do you finally understand how I feel? Now do you know how it feels to have someone you care about taken from you? She... Pauline was desperately trying to find you. Why? Why would you kill someone so devoted to you? Do you understand what you've done? 
I'm asking you a question, you goddamn murderer! I see you. And now, I have nothing left. What? Oh god. Oh god. The man stepped forward almost perfectly calm. His panic had vanished as if it were never there. He is gonna go fucking apeshit. Full beast mode. Oh my god. His eyes were disturbingly vacant. Perhaps the sorrow had overpowered him, beating his heart, his heart into quiet submission. No, that was not the case. Though his eyes were empty, a faint smile spread across his lips. The transition was swift, as though a gear had switched in his mind. The boy and the other villagers were frozen in place at the sight. Before long, the man was standing before the de deceased girl's body. And then he pulled the blade from her chest. I knew it. I knew it. I was... I really was a beast. And what I wanted was a tether. What? What are you yammering on about? Didn't... Didn't you care about that woman? Didn't you choose her over Pauline? You didn't do a sign, butchered! What? What is wrong with you? What would she do you? She was my... Serenity. But she's dead now. And there's nothing I can do about that. Peace. Calm. Tranquility. <laughs> the man's behavior was downright eerie, causing the boy to flinch back. Believing he'd had everything taken from him and could not possibly lose anything more was, I imagine, what had allowed him to stand up to the beast, the source of such crippling fear. Yet now he found himself unable to move. He found himself in the face of such an incomprehensible creature, paralyzed with fear. And the villagers were similarly, du similarly dumbstruck. Not even I could understand his behavior. What the... What the hell is wrong with you? How can you laugh at this? I don't get it. How? How indeed. I wonder myself. <laughs> I don't know either. But you know what? It doesn't matter anymore. Because every last one of my anchors has broken off and sunken into the sea. <laughs> oh my god. That laugh takes a lot out of me. I gotta be careful. I don't want my head to spin like last time. <laughs> Oh my god. Damn it. Get moving. Kill him! I'll slaughter every last one of you! Ah, oh, yes. Oh my god. My whole life. I've always. What did I kill? Jesus Christ. What was it that afflicted you with such madness? Losing your memory in the shipwreck? The abuse and insult you suffered at the villagers' hands? Or was it your grief at not being able to return to your homeland? No, none of those were the root. You were. You all were always like this. My god! Getting some Fire Emblem Three Houses things here. Flashbacks here. You always bore those twisted desires. You held those deep, constant urges to cause, each, cause others harm. That is your essence. The real you, hidden beneath the mask of sincerity. My god! This is freaking very similar to Fire Emblem Three Houses here. The true beast was your heart. The beast was a convenient skin for you to wear. You wanted to be a brutal, savage murderer. You never really loved the white-haired girl, or the black-haired woman for that matter. You were merely attached to them, fixated on the idea of a world of tranquility. You used this piece to anger yourself, 
to prevent you from drifting off into the ocean of your desires. You yearn to cause pain. While also hungering for the opposite, a calm life. You idolize this ideal's li idealized life, spent in quiet harmony with another because you knew just how difficult it would be for you to attain. Far more difficult than you satisfying your cravings, but not impossible. I personally had hoped you would find peace with someone rather than descend into savagery. It may have only been superficial, but would have, but it would have been very human. But ultimately, peace slipped through your fingers, and no one was left to suppress your desires. You could not, after all, hold them back yourself. What a tragic man. What a hopeless man you are. Weeping Manor. Oh my god. What a story! What a story! Oh my god. What a story. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. What a story. Oh my god. This is an amazing visual novel. Seriously, already! This is fantastic. You guys are being way too nice to me, but... Seriously, my god. Oh my god. I have a freaking round of applause to the author here. And just the atmosphere of the music, the art, the everything. Seriously. Wow. Wow. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. I. Oh my god. Wow. Just wow. <sighs> Oh my god. I... Oh my god. <sighs> Alright, you guys. It's been two hours and ten minutes. I think, uh... Next time in two days... What kind of tragedy or brutality are we going to find in door number th behind door number three? Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. What a story. What a story. Seriously, the themes behind this door are amazing. A love void dweller. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm sorry, I just... That was amazing. Ah, Jesus Christ. All right, so in two days from now, let's see what tragedy awaits us behind door number three. Until then, and by the way, uh, we are going to finish um, the current console arc, to Tsuki Otoshi of Higurashi, tomorrow. So if you're thing, so if you want to jump in on another console arc, it's going to be uh, three days from now. <laughs> I, uh, tomorrow is the end of Tsuki Yotoshi for Higurashi, for those who are following that. So until next time, in two days for this, and tomorrow for Higurashi, I will say so long, farewell, of we to say good night. You are all the sweetest of hearts. See ya.